through some centers for questions and answers and discussion. You might have questions regarding the portion that I have covered earlier. You might have questions regarding the particular workshop projects. Please feel free to raise questions during this brief interaction. I would also like to submit that there are many of you who would have questions in mind but are not able to ask them. Just as yesterday I mentioned one of the friends uh, participant from Siyagad Institute had written an elaborate email to the workshop support. I will suggest that most participants who have questions and who are unable to ask questions during this interaction should actually send their queries through email and we will try to consolidate these and answer most of them if not all of them in the subsequent sessions. So now may I request my video team to go over uh, to various centers. First we will go to the centers which might have a query. If there is no center which has raised a query, we will just go one by one as per the list that you have or oh, there has been a request. Uh, sir, I want to question that I use a picture element array for storing image uh, information, picture element array then after use histograph value. So why we use histograph value? If only we use histograph values then we still use the picture element array because in, in case if we use histograph value, use still using then we use the picture element array because location is described in picture element array. So why we use both? Okay. Yes, I understand. Uh, first of all, let us understand that the picture element array represents the actual picture. So if you want to see the picture either drawn digitally on a terminal or in an actual photograph, what you have is always picture element values only. Histogram is merely a representation of some characteristic of that picture as we saw representation of the contrast characteristic. And that is why we want to equalize the histograms. When we say histograms are equalized, actually what we are doing is we are transforming the original pixel values into new pixel values. So the original image is one, the new image which has enhanced contrast is a another image which is a modified set of pixel values. So we are dealing with pixel values of the image only, but in order to do the transformation, we require a separate histogram array to be calculated and the histogram to be modified as per those histogram values. We are going to Jalgaon, is it? Sir, uh, I want to ask you the question whether it will be possible, whether it will be possible to conduct such type of project in first year for uh, such huge strength. I have conducted such projects for a class of 833 students and I, you will see some of the project reports as I said I will uh, send to you. I would like to mention that fundamentally there is no difference between the students coming to IIT and students coming to your college. Just as fundamentally there is no difference between you teaching the subject at your college and I teaching at IIT. I will like to submit that here we are able to experiment, learn new things, benefit from that and establish that as a teaching practice. My suggestion would be give it a try and if it works make it formalized in subsequent attempts. But one thing you please remember, never underestimate the capability of your students both individually and as teams. In general, I have found that a group of students are capable of doing far better work than I can do even after 40 years of experience in programming. Thank you. Let us go to the next institution, PRMIT Amravati. They have a query. I am Sunil Gupta from Badnera. I want to ask a question regarding workshop project. Yes. What could be the size of workshop project if the particular subject is going to be taught in two semesters? and the team size is of 4 students. Okay. And what could be the scope of the particular project? Okay. Uh, typically, I would expect a programming project to result in software of about 1000 to 1500 lines of code by each team. 
if there is a not, not by each team but by three to four teams put together. We have had examples where about 10,000 lines of code have been written by five teams working on a project. Now this will vary. There are certain teams which may have weak students or unenthusiastic students and they may together write something like 500 to 1000 lines of code. The important point that I am trying to make here is that through any lab exercise that we ordinarily give in our laboratories where students write 10 line, 20 line, 30 line, 40 line programs. Now that does not at all indicate to them what is the kind of real software that they will see. The project gives them an opportunity not individually to write 2000 lines but to collectively write 2000 lines and to solve a real world problem. So whether they are able to write exact 2000 lines or they are able to write only 500 lines, it does not matter. Whether all their programs work correctly or do not work correctly, it also really does not matter. It is the attempt to write some large software together and attempt to solve a larger problem which is, I believe, of great significance. So coming back to your specific query, if you have this subject in two different semesters, I think you should not decide the size of the project expected based on whether the subject is covered in one semester or two semester, but you should consider what is the portion that is covered in each semester using that portion what real life problem they are able to solve. According to me, if students work for about one and a half months of a semester, half the semester and the problem is defined just before the middle semester, uh, middle of the semester, etc., they will be typically able to individually put in about 30 to 40 hours of total work. 30 to 40 hours of total work put in by three teams of five members each is able to achieve substantial amount of contribution has been our experience over decades in IIT. And I submit that if you try it, you will also find that the students will rise to the occasion. One problem is that all our students in the conventional education system are aware right now that they simply have to answer questions in a written test and they have to submit some preset assignments, 8, 9, 10 assignments in the lab. There are cases, for example, where our students don't even write the assignment themselves, but simply copy the assignments and submit. If they are required to do a project work, they genuinely put in efforts and in the process learn a lot. We are going to Government Engineering College, Trishur. Sir, project details, sir. I will do that at the end of Hello? I will do that at the end of this interaction. I will do that at the end of this interaction. Amitai University, sir, I have a query that uh, regarding uh, the fingerprint identification, sir, there is no exceptional case. What, what are the exceptional case of that fingerprint identification? If the fingers is having some trouble, then what do you have to do? Yes. Uh, actually, I am a part of the National Committee for this unique identi identification, so I am aware of what uh, they are trying to do. Uh, the cases that you mentioned are not, by the way, uh, very rare exceptions. There are several cases. For example, consider Indians who are affected by leprosy. They simply may not have fingers. In such cases, we may use their uh, toes instead of hand fingers, the leg fingers. If nothing is available, there will have to be some other special mechanism for such people. Okay, let's go over to another center, COEP Pune. Good morning, sir. Uh, I am Riyaz Jamadar from ASMS IOIT. I have a couple of queries. First one is regarding workshop project. So, these will be assigned by IIT Bombay or can we have our own area time problem if we can? That is the first. The second is regarding uh, that uh, approach you have told for labs like uh, that activity diary and all that you have given. 
if we adopt that approach the university may raise an objection and there will be mismatch in the examination approach and this activity or practice approach so how can we tackle that uh, good questions both of them uh, first of all iit bombay will not assign the projects the teams will have to figure out projects for themselves that freedom is given to the participants here however later on when you go back and teach this course you may want for example to limit the choice from say five or six domains or five or six problems and that is because when you teach this course uh, students will be asking you constantly on the problems that they face and you should be able to solve these problems either using your own expertise or the expertise of other colleagues so i suppose that answers your question as far as this workshop is concerned of course uh, here we are not talking about students but here we are talking about colleague teachers so you are all like me and therefore every team is perfectly capable of coming up with a problem definition in a domain of their choice no issue on that the idea here by the way is i do want different teams to come up with different problems remember what we said at the beginning all contributions made by and after this workshop by all of us will go into open source consequently all the projects that we collectively define 983 of us or roughly about uh, 200 teams or 150 teams all of them will be available to each one of us as a teacher so it is in fact very useful if every team takes up a different project of course the uh, the amount of effort that individual team members are able to put in after the workshop will depend upon their own busyness and schedule as well and the quantitative and qualitative contributions could differ but it will not be unrealistic to say that out of 150 team efforts at least 50 team efforts will come out to be really good contributions in different domains now imagine that suppose i am teaching at badnera or amrutapuri and i have not one but 50 defined problems already in fact with a sample solution will it not be much easier for me to define some derivative team problems based on these 50 basic problems for my students to carry out so this freedom is definitely available the second question uncannily is more important because that question deals with the presumed compulsions of a university discipline for example it was mentioned that if i ask for the activity diary and so on university may not approve it why are we so scared of what university will approve and university will not approve if we are i would submit the following tell the students that this entire exercise will be outside the evaluation process of university marks and only those students who are interested in doing the course project can do that and they will meet only in the evening after the college hours if the college objects they will meet under a tree outside on the road and they will discuss this and they will work this out and i as a teacher will help them develop a good team project please understand that the purpose here is to teach our students good team work in writing programs personally i don't believe that any university will ever object to doing this kind of experiment my submission is that in every college syllabus and the university examination system that i have seen there are some marks available for internal evaluation the internal evaluation marks and the evaluation process is not dictated by university there may be certain guidelines given but certainly a college will have adequate autonomy to implement the individual evaluation or internal evaluation my suggestion is start with this internal evaluation process some marks being allocated to this discuss this out within your own faculty colleagues with your college director and principal and i am 100% sure that this scheme will be approved all that i can do is in case any one college has a problem please write to me i will be glad to personally speak to that principal if necessarily personally visit your college and talk to the principal and university vice chancellor to submit uh, that 
such things should be permitted not only in this subject but many other subjects i hope that answers your question so be bold experiment certain things i will tell you only one thing i have found this consistently as long as these experimentations are for the benefit of our students believe me no administration will seriously object let's go over to the next uh, center ac amruta puri has a query hello sir i am sandhya from amruta puri you mentioned that there is one slot per week for tutorials can you brief on how tutorials are conducted at iit bombay is it the usual practice or okay how are tutorials handled in iit bombay i have to admit a sad fact they are not handled at all tutorials at one time uh, i used to teach this course about 25 years ago by the way and this course schedule was two lecture hours per week two tutorial hours per week and two lab hours per week the tutorials were conducted in different classes of a uh, tutorial batch size of 20 to 25 students each tutorial batch handled by a course associate or a teaching assistant unfortunately after the modified course that was approved by senate tutorials were removed consequently no formal tutorials are conducted but the two hours that students spend in the lab apart from the lab assignment some kind of interaction happens with the teaching assistants and that is where some implicit tutorial gets conducted quite frankly i don't find that adequate in fact the time table and schedule at most of your colleges and universities is far superior because you allocate more lecture works and tutorial works i am recommending to our senate uh, beginning next semester that this course structure should be revamped and two tutorial hours should be introduced where tutorials are conducted in different batches i agree with you that such tutorials would be beneficial Uh, yes as a matter of fact the histogram computations have to be made using the original image file as input but just remember that the image file could be 500 by 500 1000 by 1000 200 by 200 700 by 400 or whatever the histogram is merely a single array of 256 elements so yes we not only can but we must make use of the original image file without using the values in that image file we will simply not be able to calculate the histogram okay we'll go over to the next center we're going to phd uh, coimbatore is it okay hello mohan sir mahalakshmi my query is about uh, cumulative distribution function sir can you explain me some more points about it or to you sir a cumulative distribution function as i mentioned merely says how many pixels exist in that image which have a value less than equal to a certain value let me give another example you would be familiar with percentile scores that are given in gate examination or similar examination so when we say 96 percentile roughly it means that 96 percent students are below or at the level where you have got the marks a percentile is nothing but a similar cumulative distribution function in fact uh, any cumulative distribution function definition that you pick up such as cumulative probability distribution function this definition is very similar so i have one more question sir uh, is there any tools for extracting that matrix from a gray scale image thank you uh sorry uh, any tool for extracting a matrix from that gray scale image yes the tool are image capturing devices for example if you if you take a photograph there are tools uh, there are scanners for example which will scan that photograph and convert it into a digital image as a matter of fact the normal scanners 
convert a photograph either into a bitmap image or a JPEG image. Both JPEG and bitmap images are nothing but digital representation of that image. From JPEG or bitmap images for which the standard structure of the element values of that JPEG or bitmap are available, it is possible to extract an image array of the kind that you mean. And by extraction, I mean no further tool is required. So roughly you take a scanner, take a photograph, scan that photograph, you will get a JPEG image. There are utilities available by which you can convert that JPEG image into a bitmap image. A bitmap image is nothing but something like the array that we described. Of course, if it's a color bitmap, you will have three intensity, independent intensity values associated with each pixel. If you scan the image as a black and white image, you will almost directly get the bitmap image of the kind that we mentioned. That means you will get the values inside the array for the defined width and height of the picture. Okay, let's go over to the next center. Periyar Maniyama University, welcome. Good morning, sir. How do you fix the complexity of the project? You have told me how to give projects to students. Yes. Uh, the question is how to fix the complexity of the project that we give to the students. Uh, a similar question was asked in a different way by another participant. Believe me, it is indeed a hard problem. You cannot define the complexity. The right approach is to define an open-ended problem, a problem which cannot be solved by students. But expect the students to solve some part of it well, some part of it perhaps not so well. Do not worry if for, uh, in fact, it may not be a bad idea just as I told all the batches here that if you really want to solve the problem of registration or problem of fingerprint comparison or problem even of fingerprint verification for an application, all 800 students might end up writing software for about 5 years to develop the complete solution. So it is not possible for any batch to completely solve the problem. The beauty of a team effort is to understand that we are attempting a very large problem and do as much as we can do. So my suggestion is instead of defining the complexity to begin with, just indicate an expectation that from a team of five people, I would expect let's say a total of thousand lines of debug code at the end of the project. That means each of the five people will have to write one or more programs amounting to about 200 lines. But it is not individual standalone programs, they all must work together. And that sufficiently teaches the students to participate in a group activity. That has been my experience so far. So don't worry too much about complexity. Give very complex problems. Don't only ask them philosophical issues. Prove the existence of God, for example. That is not a solvable problem. But other than that, practically everything can be done. Let's go to the next institute. Sona College, Salem. Hello, sir, I have two questions. So one question is that, in the students in previous class, uh, you explained that one program, the sum of two integers, there is an error in the program. The error means there is a declaration uh, before defining the sum. So there is no declaration in the program. And then another question is, what is multimodal biometric techniques? There are several uh, biometric characteristics for the fingerprint, hand geometry, signature verifications, facial recognitions, iris, retina, other. And then uh, which combination is best for uh, to do uh, research? So this is my question, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. And the first question that you observed, there is no declaration. I will submit that what we were de demonstrating was not a formal computer program, but merely the way to give instructions to Mr. Dumbo. And therefore, it was not written as per the rules of C or C++ programming language, but it was written something like a pseudocode. The second question is a larger issue. Uh, you are talking about what research can be done. There is, of course, research in each of the activities that you mentioned. Multimodal uh, representation of various biometric elements is a matter of, has been a, 
has been a subject topic of great research. As far as the particular project of unique identification is concerned, we discussed all biometric possible characteristics that we can be used for capturing. We zeroed on to fingerprints because A, affordable tools and technologies and products exist by which this large exercise can be completed in an economic way. And we also know that fingerprint biometric is adequate for high security requirements such as entry into let us say defense establishments or for such additional things. These different agencies are free to use additional biometric parameters such as iris identification and so on. So please understand that fingerprint is being talked about only in the context of a important problem of giving unique ID to every Indian citizen. The biometric does not end there. There are many other issues. Uh, the specific question also related to an interesting aspect. What could be the research potential in this? I will only mention that in each of the areas of biometric that you mentioned, a lot of research has been done and yet there is a tremendous scope for advancing that knowledge and technology further. It is so in fact in most other domains that we know of. I am very glad that somebody is mentioning a research pro pro problem uh, although we are meeting here for discussing how to teach computer programming effectively. It only proves my point that when we generally think we cannot avoid thinking of research and teaching together. This is one example. Thank you very much and good luck. Okay, let's go over to VNIT Nagpur. Okay. Good morning, sir. I really appreciate what you teach and I'm really impressed. I just want to ask you, uh, uh, do we get a what kind of assignment you are going to give to, to your students? Can we able to see that list? Uh, as a matter of fact, as we speak, all the uh, projects that our students have submitted are getting edited. All of them will be released in open source. And to the participants of this course, we will do an early release of some of the sample projects that they have done. Hopefully by Monday in the Moodle and in your centers, you should receive some sample project implementations by some of the batches here. Okay, sir, I want to ask one more question. Uh, if I give the word project to the group of the people at the time of evaluation of that particular project, should I give about the equal marks to all the students because for the project, uh, the contribution of that, those members will be a different. But you said that at your case, you are going to give the equal marks to all the students. So what should be the best procedure for evaluation uh, of a group project? No, I don't think you paid attention to the complete description of the evaluation. A project in IIT Bombay for the subject that I teach has 25 marks. Out of those 25 marks, 15 marks are allocated which are same for every student. So suppose that group project report gets 11 marks out of 15, then every student gets 11 marks. But that is only part of the evaluation. The remaining 10 marks for the project are allocated based on the individual work which comes out of the peer review. Please remember that the project has 25 marks in IIT. Out of 25 marks, 15 marks are commonly allocated. 10 marks are completely based on the individual contribution. And there have been students who have been given 0 marks out of 10 by their peers. Okay, let's go over to Vellore Institute, Tamil Nadu. Uh, sir, yesterday we were teaching how to proceed with the C out. You gave a C++ program as example. But we, when we are teaching C program, uh, we have scan of and printer where we, uh, where we use uh, address operator and the control strings. So uh, students generally go wrong when using the address operator and also the control strings. Uh, wherever they need to use, they don't use. And in the printer, they use address operator. This is the common mistake which we find in all the batches. Uh, uh, very good point that you made. The assignment that you will solve today in the lab has a sample program to calculate logarithm uh, of a given value. The logarithm is calculated by summing up areas under the curve and also using mat.h library. 
what you will find interestingly in that particular sample program that has been given is that we have used a series of hash uh, defines to define what you may call certain macros which expand a very simplistic function call in our program to printf and scanf. As a result, students do not have to use those things. Please examine what we submit today and then comment on it tomorrow back again. I hope you will find this slightly more useful. So that at least at the beginning uh, time in the subject, when students have to do input output without that they can't write any program, they don't have to learn about printf and scanf, but they can use some simple macros to use that. Uh, please look at the uh, assignment that you will get in the laboratory today and we can have a discussion later. Let us go to MGM Engineering College Nanded. Uh, sir, when we open image in C, shall we have to, uh, shall we have the knowledge of that uh, header file? If we are using BMP or JPEG, we should we supposed to have knowledge of that header files as well in order to get that those pixels uh, to store in array. Uh, you are absolutely right. Depending upon the format in which the image, is av image data is available, you must have the necessary header file defined. In fact, when you read the image, you will actually read it in the structure of that particular header file. It is from that you will have to transfer values to your image array. Uh, some of the projects that have been done here, which use fingerprints, we used a format called XPM format and we also use a format which is the standard bitmap format. Almost all the header files that you mention are available as standard header files in open source. If you go to Wikipedia or if you go to image processing sites, you will get these header files which you can include. Uh, I mentioned this in the context of image, but I would like to clarify that for practically every domain where computational problems are to be uh, solved, then similar header files representing different structures for those domains will be required. They will either have to be defined by us or they will have to be used from wherever they are available. Particularly in case of images, you are absolutely right. We will need those header files. Fortunately, all the header files and even conversion programs are easily available in open source. Uh, let's go to VJTI Pune. Ah, yeah. What is the advantage? I'm a Borole from VJTI Electrical mm -hmm. Department. What is the advantage of teaching computer programming subject for electrical and mechanical engineers? Because at present, ready-made tools are available in market. So it is better to teach ready-made tools instead of computer instead of C, C++ or Java language. Uh, that's an interesting opinion. What we find in IIT Bombay is that teachers from different disciplines, including electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, insist that their students should know programming well. Uh, I would like you to appreciate that while tools are available, tools do not necessarily solve all the problems. Secondly, any engineer solving a real life problem will have to solve multitude of issues. Not all the issues will be handled by one or more available tools. Invariably in the modern day, an engineer is required to augment whatever tools are available by writing some programs of some kind or the other. In fact, writing programs using available tools is also an exercise. I would like to submit that if people who have to use MATLAB or Scilab, for example, they would do well to have some fundamental concepts about programming being very clear. And that is the purpose why all universities across the country and in fact across the world insist that basic programming knowledge be available to students of all branches. It is not that every student will be required to write 20,000 lines of code in one's life, but it is that these fundamental principles will be useful even in properly utilizing whatever packages one uses and additionally be able to write more programs if one has to write. Uh, there was just one center remaining, so let me go over to that center. Sir, I'm Hari Tawan. Uh, I'm Hari Tawan, uh, representing Teran Engineering College, Nehru, Nehru, Mumbai. I would like to ask, sir, as per your guidelines which you have given for projection on that, I will give 
projects to my students it might possible students might come with some innovative ideas but in exception if we don't have resources to complete that project then in this case can iit help us to solve that problem uh, well iit can possibly help and provide guidance in terms of any research problems that you or your colleagues may have but as far as first year students are concerned the projects which they do will have to be i am afraid handled at your college level only all that we can do is we can make available similar projects that have been done here they will be made available as a part of the open source contents which we will release in addition to all the contributions that you people will make as participants in the workshop but i will repeat once again that if students have a difficulty and they are not able to complete the project successfully it is not at all important some of somehow all us teachers believe that every problem given must be successfully solved that is so illogical because in real life that does not happen what we are teaching students is to attempt genuinely and seriously to solve a problem in the process is what they learn they may or may not be able to solve every problem successfully i don't think there is any need to worry about it what we have to ascertain as teachers of programming is whether while doing the project they have understood the concepts of programming and they have tried to apply the concepts of programming to the extent that they have understood the domain so please do not worry about what you call a hard successful completion of the project as a matter of fact there is nothing like a successful completion of any project in the world because when you complete a project successfully big or large you suddenly discover that there are 20 things which you would have done better so every project in fact is an open ended project please do not worry about that let us quickly go over to the nirma institute and then uh, we'll close the discussion for this session no sir uh, the question is how can we get pixel Value from the image, no better pixel value in, in form of matrix. So how we can get pixel value from the different images? Uh, as I mentioned, the different images will exist in the form of photographs. You scan a photograph, and when you scan a photograph, the scanner will convert that image into a JPEG file or a bitmap file. That file actually contains all the pixel data, although it contains that data in a rather funny format. defined by the header file for that particular format what you do is you take that file as input into a c program which contains an appropriately defined header file so when you read the image file the data will go and sit into that header file structure from which you can derive the pixel values i will try and see if i can send an illustrative example of a jpeg image being read into an image file over the next few days i think there is just one institution which is shouting at me saying we did not get a chance to ask a question so let us quickly go over to anna university and then we'll really close uh, this session hello good morning sir it, good morning, good morning. Uh, it's a, it's a very nice attempt uh, uh, we are uh, very uh, actually uh, uh, we are fortunate to uh, uh, be with you here and uh, i just would like to know if uh, what are the other types of projects that you would do like you have mentioned about uh, fingerprint authentication like like that what are the other types of projects that you are doing in iit bombay <laughs> well i i uh, let me let me put it this way uh, as in terms of research projects there are a large number of research projects that are happening as a matter of fact, i don't personally work in image processing my colleagues professor vikram gadre subhash choudhary and lot of others uh, do that work so in terms of research projects you will get an idea about the projects that are going on through what we call our website both of the iit bombay website and the departmental websites uh, but i am afraid i will not be able to go into details of that question now so let me now close and go back to my slides i will just require 3 minutes Okay, okay. One more question. Go ahead. Uh, whether do the projects uh, was want to do in uh, C level language or any other? Sorry, C language or in any other languages? 
the answer is very simple. This course is about effective teaching and learning in C programming. And therefore, the workshop projects for this particular workshop have to be done in C programming language. However, if in your own college, you have a composite first subject, which is like IIT Bombay C and C++, you can use that. Please understand that we don't distinguish between a particular programming language and the other in general. However, when we are teaching students a particular subject, then we are necessarily bound by whatever is the syllabus. While in IIT, we have complete freedom to decide that particular syllabus. In most other colleges, you are bound by the university syllabus. So once again, I will repeat that this workshop is essentially going to use C programming as the basis and therefore the workshop projects I am afraid will have to be done in C. Okay, now we will really wind up and go over to my slides. First, during the workshop you are required to set up teams, carry out preliminary work in consultation with center coordinators to set up the teams and decide on the particular topic on which you would like to do the workshop project. After the workshop, complete both parts of the project. The project consists of writing a team uh, software for a problem that you choose and writing of questions and answers on the allocated topics. On the second part, I will comment later. But when you complete both the parts, this will entitle participants not only for IST certification, but we have decided to do something more exciting. We want each remote center to evaluate the project submissions and forward recommendations for the three top projects. Now these recommendations from each of the 22 centers will come to us and we will decide on a minimum norm on a global basis. So we will examine the top entries submitted by each center based on this minimal norm. For example, if a center has very few participants, we will not consider three top projects to be recognized, but maybe only two. If a center has multiple, uh, a very large number of participants, such as 60 or 70, we may consider even up to five top projects. Eventually, we will consider these projects and depending upon this assessment and on the number of teams from a center, we will take up to three teams from each centers, which will be identified for an award. And what we have in mind, is to give cash awards to these teams in form of honorarium to all the winning teams. The amounts roughly we have in mind, although we have not finalized it, I am discussing it with uh, some of my colleagues here, but we are talking about 10,000 rupees as the first prize, 7,000 rupees as the second prize, and 5,000 rupees as the third prize. Additionally, we will be giving a token honorarium of 2,000 rupees uh, to uh, uh, each of the center coordinators for helping us in this assessment of these projects. And last but not the least, the best project from the team, from all the centers will get a special award. We have about 50,000 rupees as honorarium to be paid to that team in our mind. I hope this will provide a small additional incentive to all my colleagues from various centers to do a really good job. Please remember, our endeavor together is actually to create very useful material and very useful mindset for ourselves to teach programming better in the courses that we offer subsequently in our colleges. Thank you very much.